sought to torment the families, aside from committing the actual murders themselves, mm-hmm. he he never sent body parts back, or you know, <laughs> he, he he often hid uh, the bodies of the oh, yeah, of the children tried. who he who he mm-hmm. had beaten or you know murdered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he clearly didn't want them found, at least straight away. He was trying to conceal his crime so that, mm-hmm. you know, at the very least, he wouldn't get caught as quickly, if not at all, um, by obscuring the bodies and, you know, hopefully not putting any attention onto himself. However, the fact that he was known to local police who... And the neighbours. And the neighbours to to have been a you know, repeatedly mm-hmm. um, somewhat of a local terror. Um, uh, you know, the fact that he's he's been caught strangling and, you know, beating children half to death with rocks and then dumping their bodies in, you know... Ditches. <laughs> ditches full of briars and thorns would have sort of, you know... I would have thought it would have set off some alarm bells straight off. But, yeah. There were so many people living in Buenos Aires. That's true. And I guess yeah, I remember you know, it was like a nine or twelve people family that lived in one single room and it was just one room mm. in a huge settlement. Yeah. So uh, really how how could people keep an eye on children after all how how hard how hard it yeah. could have been. No, definitely. And I think a lot of the time as well, parents were out, you know. Working themselves, mm-hmm. um, you know, working themselves to the bone to provide, you know, the basic necessities for themselves and their families, keep a roof over their heads and food in their tummies, yeah. that they did have to rely on, you know, the the local neighbours, you know, the local neighbourhood, all the nonnas to <laughs> keep, nonas. yeah, to keep an eye on the kids just generally. And the kids would sort themselves out. I believe at that time they they all had access to free schooling. So, um, mm-hmm. uh, that is free primary school at least. Yep. Yeah. So you know, so at least in theory, for uh, children of young age, the the potential at least, if they didn't decide to quit and it, uh, either not go to school or go, you know, find a job if they mm-hmm. could, if they had one. Uh, available to them um otherwise school you know school was an option and um you know that definitely would have um aided argentina's you know uh, extreme rise you know ir- uh, rise in in its success which you know went up until the 1930s pretty um, much yeah so um but um Cajetano, um, I believe, started started schooling uh, mm-hmm. or was at least pushed into schooling by his parents. However, had zero interest and motivation in his education. He got kicked out one after another time after another time. According to some sources, he was kicked out from at least six different schools. And we're talking about primary. This is, um, it really, I mean, child killers are something very upsetting. It's something that just infuriates the common, like even criminals, like, you know, criminals that are violent against children are the worst kind, even in jail. Mm. But uh, child killers uh, are simply something that wasn't in the minds of the people you really wouldn't expect that your eight-year-old neighborhood would try to attack your toddlers. No, that's, really. that's that's right. And the fact that a someone, you know, a person so young could harbor such well, I don't, I don't know if malice is the right word. Were they violence crimes of? You know, crimes of passion, or was it? Mm, I wouldn't use that concept. No, that's, that's the thing. They, they, from you know, from a lot of the reports, he was just mean and enjoyed inflicting pain, pain, but 
it, can I talk about the bear? It was seemed fairly dispassionate. All right, go ahead. Kind of, kind of dispassionate. That's it's very hard to classify him. True. So, whether or not he actually killed his first victim in 1906, that was the year that he was first uh, in prison. It seems like um, that same year, Fiore, Cazetano's father, found a dead bird in one of his shoes. And upon some inspection, he found a cardboard box full of dead birds under his bed, or more like their beds, because again, they will live all together. And this is when he discovers that um, one of Cajetano's first hobbies was uh, killing little animals. It seems like he had some particular interest in poking birds' eyes. So, upon discovering that, and it seems like he would also masturbate very frequently or compulsively. Which is actually what initially got his parents to turn him in to the police. Exactly. Um, as masturbation was considered to be a, a moral crime... Uh, or crime against morality, and but that's not what it says in the in the first police report because uh, I found it actually. That's you see, that's the problem with that. That's the issue with the sources. So I have the same source. Like mm-hmm. it seems like um, compuls- compulsory com- compulsory masturbation was uh, one of his other hobbies. Mas- but most of that, uh, he was taken to the police, and according to the first report. His uh, father would um, witness or he would testify that he was just mean and violent, that he would attack his neighbors, that he would insult them through or throw rocks at them, and he couldn't be um, disciplined. That's pretty much what it says. It's like he would be violent, but he couldn't be disciplined. And we already know by this point what discipline meant for Fiore. So, mm. more physical punishment. That's uh, that's funny how some sort of violence, it is legitimate mm. at some points of society or some ages and some other types of violence isn't. Mm. So, only being only nine years and five months old, Casotano spent his first two months imprisoned in Juby. Mm. After being released, he attacked two more children. He attempted to drown uh, a two-year-old boy, Severino González Caló, and he burned the eyelids of a 22-month-old baby that was named Julio Bote with a weird cigarette. In both cases, as it happens almost every single time with him, he was caught uh, stopped by any adult. Mm. Actually, in um, when he tried to drown a uh, little Severino, he actually made up this uh, fantastic story about that he um, he wasn't uh, drowning the child; he was trying to save him, and that a lady wearing all black was the one that tried to kill the child. So he was actually a saver. Mm. So. There I said that there is a bit of deceitfulness in his way of, of acting. So, yeah, he really... There I said that he really knew that he wasn't doing something that most people would think was right. Do you think he came up with that um, uh, description, that, that uh, alibi? Um, mm-hmm. Alibi. Uh, do you think he came up with that... Uh, excuse the uh, to before or after he was caught, or did, did it say whether he was uh, he came up with it before or after? Was it something that he did and then upon getting caught made it up? Made it um, up to try and uh, oh, that he was already planning this uh, story about the lady, in black. yeah, and had his convenient excuse for the next time that he, uh, yeah, he was pulled up. That is something that uh, I couldn't find in any of the sources. Mm. Might as well be 
either of them, but what I get of this particular episode uh, is that um, he would lie mm. to get to get free, and in a different occasion, he also um, no, this would be okay. I'm jumping in a few years, but he would mm-hmm. also made up another story about being caught. Uh, tying up a child, like trying to strangle him, and he would say that he was trying to save it. He was untangling mm. the child. Mm. So yeah, this deceitfulness, it is something that is part of his behavior. Yeah. So two years after his first detention, that is in 1906, Fiore takes Cayetano once again to the police. But in this new occasion, he's uh, sent to a youth detention center. Mm. That was called the Colonia de Menores of Marcos Paz. So, Colonia means colony, Menores means minor. So, it's very much a colony of minors. Mm -hmm. I did some research and it's actually interesting because this 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 juvie, this juvenile detention center, was the first of of the time. It was the first of its class. Uh that it was created uh, in 1905, and it was supposed to be an institute in which, Mm. through the teaching of trades and agricultural work, because it was uh, a former farm, uh, that uh, the idea of... uh, How can I say it? Yeah, that uh, these um, children or orphans or minors could actually be reformed, Mm-mm. quote unquote, through uh, the teaching of trades and hard work, mm. pretty much. I mean, it, the the uh, the uh, reformatory school, um, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, institutions were quite popular at that time. Um, it seems. Um, I mean particularly in the United Kingdom and in the United States. Um, one of the more famous uh, reformatories, youth reformatories, was Borstal School, uh, Prison for Children, um, um, which has had a lot of uh, famous... Uh, should we say, criminals from um, Britain's history uh, have their, you know, do their time there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also quite renowned for its uh, brutal treatment and and, and abuse that was uh, done onto the the young folk who were were sent there to be reformed. Um, It's kind of universal so to speak like mm. i don't think that people have a positive concept of reformatory reformatory institutions or pretty much in no i guess that if, if i i ask you actually mm. uh, a few days ago what sort of um fame or opinion have people about reformatories but uh, i think largely uh, I think in at australia the time, i mean in australia i think um at the time, a lot of um, people with good intentions, or at least they thought they had good intentions, were uh, mm-hmm. were happy to uh, go ahead with the development of um, reformatories. And unfortunately, the reality, when you put a lot of children in a com- cl- enclosed, confined space with carers and minders who... Actually, a lot of them, as it turned out, in Australia were uh, notorious child abusers. And it's just, it's never going to turn out good. And I think in, uh, yeah. Because in- there were all sorts of, of children here. There were also, at some point, all, all, also children that would end up there because they were homeless or that. They came from very poor families and mm. they were others that already have a delinquent, quote-unquote, uh, life experience. Mm. And Gazetano, that, well, he seemed like he his extremely violent tendencies started since a very young age. Yeah. So when I was, um, when I was an adolescent, 
my dad gave me this novel.